Welcome to the Rhino files for assignment two. I just wanted to go through the files and the um, items in the downloads folder so that you understand how to load them and how to use them. So I have Rhino 6 and 7. I have saved files in both versions depending on which one you use. Um, I will be working in my tutorials from now on in Rhino 7, but for this first tutorial, I'm gonna be in Rhino 6 just so you can see that it should look exactly the same no matter which version you're using. So um, in the downloads folder, you have a whole bunch of things. You won't have this SketchUp file that's only in the other SketchUp uh, folder, but you will have a whole bunch of things, this face camera component, park textures. Um, once you open up your Rhino file, you might see a new folder come up that says embedded files. Um, we have a basic lighting. We have a PDF of the community park plan, aliases and scale figures, and then version six and seven of the Rhino file. So whichever version you're using, open that up and it should open up into plan view here. So the first thing that I would like you to do before you do anything else is go into your perspective view over here and set it to rendered. I just want to make sure that all of the textures that I've embedded in this file are showing up right. So if you see um, just surfaces instead of trees, then please get in touch right away so that we can troubleshoot and figure out why that's not working. There may be something else that I have to do to embed the texture files um, within your model. So that's the first thing I want everybody to do. And if you're having issues, get in touch right away. Okay, so if you don't see these trees, get in touch. There's also a few other textures within this file. For example, you'll see these um, cars over here all have colors. And then we have these uh, beautiful palm um, splash pad features and there's these roof elements. So just take a quick look and see if you can see these textures, if they look the same as this file that I have open right now. And um, then you can move on with the rest of the tutorial. So if you haven't already imported Rhino aliases, then I'm going to ask you to do that now. I need you guys to do this because in every tutorial that I do, I'm going to use uh, shortcut commands. And if you are not on the same page with those, then you might end up um, being confused or missing a step. So how we can load the aliases is just type in options to your command bar and go down under Rhino options, there's aliases right here. You're just gonna go import and navigate to the file where you um, have downloaded all of the course files, and you're gonna pick up that Rhino aliases file right there. And it's going to import 124 different aliases, just click okay and okay, and now we can be sure that when I tell you to use a certain command, that when you use it, it's going to work. Now these have been coordinated with AutoCAD as well. So this should create a, a much more fluid workflow if you're working between CAD and Rhino at any point. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is load a script. The script is the face camera script. If you've been in my DM1 class, you might already have this script loaded, but if you haven't, then just navigate into the folder into this um, script file. And all you have to do is drag and drop it into your Rhino window here. And it should say, um, script file to load and it pops up there. You can check if it worked by typing the command face camera. If you see face camera show up, then the script has been properly loaded and you're good to go. Um, if you don't see it show up or if you get an error message up here, I do have a troubleshooting video that I posted previously. So please just let me know if you have issues loading the script file and I can direct you to that troubleshooting video so that you can get things organized. The next thing we're gonna do is load our display mode. So again, just type in options and under Rhino options, down at the very bottom where it says view, open up your little arrow and go to display modes. Now I already have mine loaded, but you're going to just go ahead and click import. And then you're gonna to navigate to your folder, pick up that basic lighting and open it up. I'll just re-import it and click okay. And now if we change our display mode to basic lighting, you should see the model transform into like a, a pure white model that has outlines. And then um, ideally, if this worked properly, you're going to see shadows as well. 
like um, as if you're in a sunny outdoor space. But I know that everybody's rhino does different things. So if you are not seeing shadows, I just want to start you off with a few things to try. The first thing is to go into your render tools and click on the sun panel. Make sure that your sun is on. And then if you go down to the location, you can set it to Toronto. This park is somewhere in Southwest Ontario. So set your park area to Toronto, make sure the sun is on, and um, that will be the first step. The next step will be to check if you have an environment in your drawing. If you go over here in the render tools to the environment panel and you don't see anything here or it says um, studio or it has another type of environment, what you're going to need to do is click on this plus sign and go import from environment library and um, automatically it will navigate to your environments folder that have come pre-installed with Rhino. You can just scroll down until you see Rhino Sky or Rhino Sky. Don't ask me why there's two. I use this one without a space, um, but it shouldn't matter either way. So just select a Rhino Sky and click open. Mine's already loaded, so it's there. And that should um, help you be able to see the shadows and get this kind of um, sky looking outdoor lighting scenario. Now there's a few other things that might have gone wrong in the display of this display mode. So if you've turned on your sun and added your environment and you're still not seeing anything show up, um, make sure you get in touch right away so that we can figure out what's going on. I want us to look quickly at the toolbar over here. Um, so I have mine set up to have properties and then materials, then my layers. I also have appended the sun panel, the rendering panel, and the named views panel. So what you can do um, to set yours up like mine is just on this little gear wheel over here, you can right click, and now you can select which of these different toolboxes shows up on your toolbar. So I've turned off the help one and the libraries, and there's a whole bunch of others that are kind of default with the toolbar. Um, and I've turned on named views, properties, rendering, sun, the layers, and my materials. So um, if you want to customize your toolbar so that it looks like mine, that's what you can do. And then once a toolbar is active, you can just drag it around so that it's in um, the place that you want it. Now let's go into some of these named views. I mentioned that there's some saved views within this file, so let's go to view 1A. If you open up the, um, the park plan that I included, you can take a look and orient yourself to the spaces that are in this file. So if I just zoom in, um, I can tell you that view 1A is in this kind of gateway plaza area looking towards the splash pad and we have the restroom change rooms off to the side. So you can see that in the view. Here is the splash pad over here. This is the kind of main central lawn. We're in the gateway plaza and there's the uh, washroom facility. So use the plan to orient yourself to the spaces that you're looking at. I want you to get familiar with setting cameras in Rhino. So if you haven't already used the named views panel before, um, it's a good time to get familiar with it. So you can first just go through all of these saved views, double click on them and let them take you around the model but you're not limited to using these views in this exercise. You can create your own views. Um, so the first thing to be aware of is how I've set up these views. So if we go into the properties panel, as long as nothing else is selected in the model, and you can just check that by clicking on the sky up here, it's gonna give you information about the view. So it'll tell you the title, it's telling you the pixel dimensions of your viewport, and it's gonna tell you the projection. So whenever I make views, I always make sure they're in two point perspective. Why? It corrects the vertical elements so that I never have to worry about correcting those myself later. So um, I'll just show you what it looks like if you are not in two point perspective. If you're just in perspective view and you're panning around 
and you decide that you're going to take a view over here, that's good. Um, you can choose that view, but you can see that the verticals are not perfectly vertical. So um, this element here, it looks pretty straight, but if we look over here, we can see that this edge is leaning slightly in. If we change this from perspective to two point perspective, it's going to correct the verticals. You may have to change your view so that you can um, get back to sort of where you were intending to go. But now as we move around the model, no matter what view we're looking at, all of the verticals are corrected. Now that looks really strange when we get up here to uh, aerial views. It's starting to look a little bit like an axonometric. Um, so this works best for eye level views. So let's go back to our name views panel to our first view and take a look at the camera um, information. So here I have a lens length of 19.42. That's just, I had just selected a location and I just saved it without looking at the lens length. I just wanna give you guys a good range of um, lens lengths to work within. 18 would be considered a wide angle view. That means that you can, um, you can see a lot within the vision and um, it also means that things that are, uh, things might appear smaller, even though they're, um, they're pretty close to the viewing plane. If we were to change this to the other end of the spectrum, 35 millimeters, a 35 millimeter camera, you see that we're zoomed right in. It crops the image. Um, and if I zoom out, I have to go all the way back behind this, uh, this bioswale here in order to kind of capture the same range of view that I had before. And even then I'm not really seeing all of the pavilion over here. So a good range is somewhere between usually 21 to 28. But you can go as wide as 18 if you really want to capture a wide angle view or zoom in to 35 if you want to focus on a particular element. Maybe you wanna be standing over here, have a nice planter or um, paving feature in the foreground, but still be able to feel close to the splash pad elements. The more zoomed in you are, for example, if I've put this to 50, um, the more that those far away elements kind of get flattened. So you see how all of these elements there um, looking a little bit flat. If we go back to 24, for example, we can see that they kind of uh, get a little bit deeper. So that they look a little bit smaller and further away into the background. So be aware of what lens, lens length you're working with um, and keep in mind that range of somewhere between um, 21 to 28 and 18 at the widest and 35 at the longest. How can you tell if your camera is at eye level? It's really hard unless you have some scale figures. So um, let's go into the scale figures file. And I'm just gonna choose a person here and um, I will use copy and then paste to drop that into my file. And once you've pasted, you can use ZSA to locate um, where that file is. So I'm going to move the file from the uh, location that it got dropped into. And I will just look for a place in my model that makes sense. Maybe I'll just turn this onto my ghosted view so that things move a little bit quicker. So, I want to drop her into this plaza area because that's where my view is, um, but I don't know exactly what level she's dropped in at. And if I wanna make sure she gets right onto the surface, I can use the command while I'm in the move command. I can write on surf like that, select a surface, and now I can be sure that she's going to be dropped right onto the top of that surface. So I'm gonna put her in over here and return to my view and change my to the lighting. And now I can see that my scale figure is, uh, is right there and her feet are right on the, um, the edge of the plaza. 
So I'm gonna use my gumball to just move her around. If you don't see your gumball, you can just turn it on down here. Now, are we at eye level? Where's the horizon line? The horizon line is down here. That's the point where the ground meets the sky. Are her eyes on the horizon? No, they're above the horizon. So that indicates to me that right now we are probably the size of a six or seven year old child and we are looking up. Um, so every, everybody's head is above us. If we want to get to eye level, um, then we need to alter this view. So one way to do that would be just to rotate it so that um, her eyes are now approximately at the, eye lo at the horizon line. Or uh, use this hand tool to move ourselves up in space. So now she's on the horizon line and we can be sure that we're at eye level. So as you go through these views, you might need to make adjustments. And uh, I would ask you to be aware of where your eye levels are in the model and use your scale uh, silhouettes to help you determine scale of the space and um, perspective angle. So you can drop in more scale figures and populate them around the image just so that you have an idea of how close and far everything is. All right, if you want to update your view now that you've changed her so that she's at the eye level, all you need to do is with the view selected, click on save as, and you can just update it. You can name over that, or you can give it a new name. It's up to you. Um, I'll just click okay here and say yes. So now um, if I navigate away and then I go back, it's gonna save that view and it has updated everything. Remember when we uploaded the Rhino script called face camera? I'm just gonna show you how that works. So let's say we're in another view over here maybe, and we notice that all of the tree um, silhouettes are kind of angled towards a different direction. And um, it means that we're not really getting the full impact of the canopy that is around us. We can use face camera to turn all of those elements at the same time towards our camera location. So I'm just gonna type in face camera. I'm just gonna say select surfaces or meshes to face the camera. I'll go into my layers and under SketchUp is where all of the trees are because this was imported originally from SketchUp. I'm gonna right click and go select objects. And now it's selected all of the trees in my file. I'll press enter. And after a minute, it's going to orient all of the files towards the camera location that I'm currently in. So now, if I go back to my view, you can see all of the trees have rotated because now they're all oriented towards this other view. So as you move around and save your own views and decide which views you're going to use, remember to also orient the trees and any scale figures you have towards the camera by using that command face camera.